Right now, we want to welcome an old friend. Good to have him back in Fort Worth. He's going to be a great addition to this TCU football staff. If you would, welcome the special teams coordinator, Mark Tomerdahl, to the show. Mark, come on out, my man. Thank you. Nice to see you, brother. Yes, yes, sir. Glad to have you back with us. Cool to be here. The, uh, does it feel like home a little bit? It does. Yeah. It does. Life comes full circle. Sometimes. It does, doesn't it? So after a 21-year break, I'm happy to be a Horn Frog again. Good to, good to have you back because if, if for those who don't know, Coach Tomerdahl was on Coach Dennis Franchoni's Correct. staff here at TCU. The Sun Bowl, obviously, mm -hmm. was uh, was kind of the uh, the jumping off point for what has been now nearly two and a half decades of success. Did you have any idea at the time that it was going to be that? Could you have put that in perspective? Probably not. No, I mean, we um, obviously a really good foundation was laid. Um, there was a, I believe at the time, um, uh, that bowl game was, we, uh, it was the biggest win oh, yeah. uh, in bowl game history as far as pregame, being a pregame dog. Yeah. But to sit here and say that uh, when we left, we thought that uh, TCU would be undefeated, um, probably not. Yeah. So, I mean, we give, and, and this staff that I'm on now uh, gives a lot of credit to the job that Coach Patterson has done. Oh, yeah. It, it yeah, really no, took we, a time for you, you, you and Coach Patterson were on multiple staffs together Correct. over the year. Yeah. Correct. And, and so you, you know the history of TCU football yep. because you and I have talked that you've kind of kept an eye on things no even doubt. even even when you've been away. The progress, though, that has been made in the last two and a half, or two and a half decades, facilities, fan base, uh, the Big 12, it's pretty impressive, isn't it? Oh, no doubt. And again, just the, um, the vision and the, just the constant, you know, Gary almost willed this program yeah. to where it got to. So again, um, to say that we would have foreseen that, I'd be lying to you. You think about your history, Coach, you, you've been around the block as a, as a special teams coordinator on the offensive side. Uh, you've been an associate head coach. You, you've coached in the Pac-12. Uh, you, you've coached in the, in the SEC. I mean, you've been around. Mm -hmm. Give me some sense of how the game has changed from a special team side over the last three plus decades. I think it's become a lot more explosive. Um, voice of experience, you know, there was a time where you just played special teams not to screw up your offense or defense. And now uh, you see it every weekend you know, at all levels of football, uh, college and the NFL, we are expected to make game-changing plays. Yeah. It's become a lot more dynamic. You, uh, you grew up in Minnesota, mm -hmm. small town in Minnesota, that, Fergus that, Falls. That, that would be Fergus Falls. For, Fergus Falls, Minnesota, which is in Otter Tail County, by the well way. Well said. How well about said. that? Yeah. Uh, when, you're, when you're coming out of Fergus <laughs> Falls, did you know you were going to be a college football coach? No. No. I, um, my dad was a real successful uh, insurance salesman, um, and so it was the, my plan to take over the family business. What changed? I uh, wanted to get my master's. So um, I went to Wyoming with the intent to get my MBA. And to pay for it, I became a graduate assistant in football. And that just got my blood. Who, who's, uh, whose staff were you on at Wyoming? I was on four of them. You were on four uh, Wyoming staff? I was on four staff, so I was hired by Al Kincaid. Yeah. Um, I was with Dennis Erickson for a year. Yeah. Uh, and then Paul Roach is really my mentor in this business. And then I stayed with Joe Tiller for a while. Wow. So, you, you, Joe, I mean, you've had some guys that you've worked for. Oh, no doubt. I mean, you look at your history and your resume. I mean, if we go Purdue and Utah State and Cal and Louisiana, I mean, all over the place. Yes, sir. But you've worked for some great head coaches. Yeah. And the guy that you're with right now mm -hmm. may be one of the best guys in the business. Yeah, Sonny and I worked together. This will be year eight. Um, uh, Sonny and I first worked together at Louisiana Tech, um, then went to Cal. And so... Um, I think we kind of know what to expect from each other. Um, he's got a lot of his dad in him. I'm old enough where I actually coached against Spike. Um, and so Sonny's got a really good moral compass. Um, he wants to do things the right way, so he's a pretty easy guy to, to uh, believe in. Give me your assessment here early on of what you've seen talent-wise from the Horn Frogs. Well, I, mean, I know you're three days in or three well, practices Yeah, but in. I've coached against these guys. Yeah. So, I mean, I know this roster really well. I know this team really well. Um, and so we've got a great core of skilled players here. I think anytime you take over a new program and you make some changes schematically, um, you know, we're running a different defense than what Gary did, you're going to have some gaps to fill. That's just part of taking one over. But we've got a, a great core here. Yeah, and you can tell it already just in three days in uh, to uh, spring practice. I want to jump back real quickly to, to your time with Dennis Franchoni, mm -hmm. uh, both here and, and, at, uh, and at Texas A&M. We had a chance to spend some time this summer, and you're going to see this here very soon uh, on frogstoday.com. We spent several hours with Coach Fran, and 
and, and it was an opportunity to, to reminisce a little bit. Mm -hmm. And he, his reflection on that time here at TCU is pretty amazing in that I think now he has maybe, I don't want to put words in his mouth, a greater appreciation for his time here. And TCU has that effect on people, doesn't it? it when you move away, you kind of want to get back. Yeah, it does. And, and again, now you just look at what took place at that time. I mean, we took over a program that was 1-10. and 10. And three years later, beat USC in a bowl game. Right. So, I mean, that was a phenomenal flip. And then, again, as we've already talked about, to see where the program went from there, yeah. it's almost unfathomable. Yeah, yeah. And you think about uh, the, the uh, quality of life in Fort Worth and everything that kind of goes into that. It, yeah. it adds up, right? Yeah. And it's, again, uh, as you've alluded to, I've been to enough different parts of the country right. where I know what feels right. And this, sure. this place has got great feelings. Some glamorous places, Laramie and Lubbock and uh, Ruston. I mean, and, you, you've, and the list goes on. And the list goes on yeah. and on. <laughs> Mark Tomberdahl, one of the good guys in the business. Would you say you're the most famous person from Fergus Falls? Absolutely not. Who no. would you say is the most famous? Um, when I was a young kid growing up, a guy by the name of Dick Warner okay. was the last person cut on um, Lombardi Super Bowl team. Okay. He never played, but he made it to the last cut. That would put him far and away the most famous person from Ferguson. Walters. See, because I had someone else. I had a classmate of yours okay. down as maybe the most famous. Do you know the name Dave Thur? I do not. I do not. He would not have been a classmate of mine. Uh, he's right around the same time. Okay. Dave Thur from Fergus Falls, Minnesota, invented, created, Three video games for the old Atari machine. No. Yeah, and you've he's from Fergus Falls. You've done your homework. Yeah. I have never heard that never, name before. He knows you. And Fergus Falls is a small Yeah, town. I know. He knows you. That's the way it is. So, uh, let me uh, close with this because we, we talk often about the family that is here mm -hmm. at, at, at TCU and the culture that Coach uh, Dykes is starting to build and that you, that you start to feel around here. Do you already get the sense that there's something special happening in Fort Worth? Yeah, and again, I think a lot of it ties back to what's taking place here. I mean, th this program has been so successful for so long that um, it's important to this community. It's obvious. It's important uh, to our former players to be to drawn back in. And this is not a rebuild. Mm -hmm. I know some things need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. I understand that. But um, this is not a rebuild. I, I, I just think that there's such a strong draw to this place for any number of reasons that um, I think ex exciting things can happen here quite quickly. So what will people see out of your special teams? Aggressive? I mean, uh, yeah, we, check we, this we, out. I, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't talk about the great tradition of TC special teams. Yeah. I mean, there's been two special teams coordinators here since 1997, right. myself and Dan Sharp. Right. So uh, Danny, um, I had a coach against him. Uh, uh, TCU has been outstanding on mm -hmm. special teams for decades. We just have to uh, really live up to the bar that's been set here. Why um, Why didn't you never coach in the NFL? And I, and I ask that because I always viewed you as one of the best special teams coaches in the country and a guy that would fit at that level. I'm surprised you never answered that call. I have tried. Yeah. Um, I've interviewed a couple times for NFL jobs and it just never stuck. Right. Um, and I'm at peace with that. Yeah. Um, it doesn't eat me up. Um, when I was younger, it's something that I actively pursued for probably six or seven years, and I just never got in. Yeah. And so um, I believe we all have a plan, and I'm, I'm, I would say I'm, you're never really content in this business. I think if you get content, you get passed by in mm -hmm. a heartbeat. But um, I'm not filled with regret, and I'm happy doing what I'm doing. Well, good for TCU then that you stayed here. Hey, one final thought. Was there a moment where you guys knew this program was flipped and it was headed to great things. And, I, and I'm not talking about here with Coach Sykes, but I mean, maybe in the past. Was there a moment? Yeah, yeah. We, uh, you could ask any member of Fran's staff about this moment and we'd all give you the same answer because it's just it's something we've never forgot. Uh, JW would remember this. Um, we were at the old practice fields up on the hill. And back in those days, you know, we, we couldn't coach the way we coached then. It was two a days, you know, in godly temperatures. Um, our first practice here, we had IV 25 players. Right. You can't do that anymore. Right. Um, and we took a break, and Landry Burdine mm -hmm. uh, stood up at walk-on at the time, and he said, guys, I am sick of this. He said, we're one in 10, and all we're doing is complaining. He said, it's time that we just listen to these guys. And like that, like that, everything changed. That's that one so moment. If you, if you look back at the one moment that probably set the foundation for the last 25 years, it was Landy Bird dying on a hot summer day.
JW, we need to mark that. We'll share that with Landry. I'm sure he'll remind us of it constantly. Yeah. Mark Tomerdahl, thanks for coming by. Well done. Good to have you with us here. One of the good guys in the business joining us.